So hi folks, welcome to the first edition of IBA Fight Night where we're going to be looking at the fights from September the 24th, 2022 and I'm joined with the IBA president, the man who's been doing it for years and years and years, Mr Alan Mortlock. How are you Alan? I'm very well thank you Liam, very well indeed. So we're going to be looking at these fights from September 24th and we're going to be breaking this up so tonight we're just going to be looking at the first five fights. Um how long have you been doing the IBA, Alan, for people who don't necessarily know? I started promoting um, kickboxing in 1986. Right. And um, the first ever show I'd done, it was a £5 note a ticket. <laughs> and we had a place that held 300 and we had 700 through the door. Right. And uh, funny enough, Liam, uh, Nigel Ben was on the bill. Right. And... Uh, I paid him £50. Everybody was getting £50 winner takes all. The kickboxing promotions at the time, there was only a couple of about. And it was one of my old karate instructors that really gave me the idea as a, as a you know, because he was promoting. And he actually said to me, he said, you don't want to get involved in that, how he said, it's too much hard work. <laughs> I said, no, I, I, I fancy having a go at it. So that's what I did in 1986. And... Um, Back then, I called it the UKP, and that was United Karate Promotions. Really? And the first show was in March. I think it was March the 14th, 1986. How many United... fights have you done since how many fight nights, do you reckon? Untold, Liam. I couldn't count, mate. Yeah. So it's it's been what? Is it almost, I mean, what's my maths? Is it almost 30 years that you've been doing since 1986, I think it's about 33 years. Really? God, that is amazing. And, and have you enjoyed it over that time, Alan? Has it been fun? Yeah, I loved it. Very stressful job. Yeah. But uh, like my doctor said, he said, you five thrive on stress. Yeah. So I'm glad, I'm glad he said that to be truthful. <laughs> so how difficult is it to set up a fight night like this? This one we're looking at first. Well, I'll tell you from start to finish, I'll start about 12 weeks before. Mm-hmm. So I'll start contacting all my contacts, all my fight, all my trainers and all my fighters. I'll lay down the bill, the, the card, the main events, the undercard, do it all myself. I do all the matchmaking. So I kind of, in a, in a word, kind of pride myself on the best matches that I can make. And we've got to remember it's not professional or amateur boxing, it's prize ring boxing back in the old days. And still now it's unlicensed boxing. Obviously not illegal, but yeah. not licensed by anything but we we're a big organization so it's um it's extremely once you get halfway in and you've got your matches made then it starts to get quite hard where injuries come along mm -hmm. all sorts of different stories that that happen uh but that show that we did on the 24th you, yes. you imagine we're dealing with a lot of people and we never really had anybody pull out that show it was a smooth run that was yeah, so we're going to have a look at this uh, September 24th. So we're going to be looking at the first five fights. And uh, so the first fight you had on the night was uh, Rishi Kesh up against Lewis Driver. That was like a, a skills fight with kind of no decision. Anything that people are going to watch this fight afterwards need to know about them boxers? Well, what you got there, you've got two young uh, up-and-coming fighters, uh, 15, 14 and 15 years old. Uh, safety, again, is our paramount. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, they... They had a good fight, showed their skill, and the next time um, they will have a, a decision. But I like to to ease the the juniors in, and uh, but they're ready now. To they're very technical, and they're very good boys, so they're ready now to to go out and have a decision fight. Yeah, fantastic. And and I did see on the night. Obviously, we're not going to say the results beforehand of each fight, although that was a a no decision uh, fight. Um, but you gave them a fee, didn't you? Because they 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 put on such a good fight. Yeah, I mean, to be quite honest with you, there's like um, there's an organisation that I work with called Box Up Crime, and Rishi right. um, came, or he, he, he's still with them, and it's like a, a programme for young people to get off the street, get themselves out of the life on the road and stuff like that. And so we've seen a, a fantastic amount of uh, people, young people, where they've changed their life, their scenarios, their situations. And Rishi, that's how I met him. Yes. And... Um, I trained Rishi for quite some time mm -hmm. uh, myself. But what I thought was nice, that they're at a very nice level. And instead of getting them a trophy, I thought I'm going to give them a bit of wages. Because I did say on the night, you, I think you'll always remember your first wage packet. 
Yeah. And both them boys, I think, want to be boxers. So they'll look back on that and they'll remember that one, you know, that on the day that they, they had their thing, they got a wage packet. So and, I and thought it was nice. Yeah, it's great. And what's amazing for these young lads, they're going on fighting in front of a huge crowd at the Circus Tavern. Exactly, yes. It was a good crowd there, a big crowd. Yeah. Big crowd. Yeah. So second fight we're also going to be looking at. We're going to talk about the fights first and then you're going to see the five fights. And then at the end, Alan will probably pick out his favourite fight out of the five. So uh, yeah, right. the second fight was uh, Luke Granger up against Sam Campbell. Again, we're not going to tell you the result. Anything we need to know about this one? Again, lovely boxers. I mean, Sam uh, trains down with a very close friend of mine and a very, very excellent trainer uh, called Russ, uh, Russ Smith. Turns out a, a lovely fighter, so he was well schooled. And Luke Granger, come from Warsaw, I believe, up, up the road, right up the north, travelled down. And again, a very schooled kid. I thought it was a good match there, very even match. And to be honest with you, it become, you know, I won't give the result, and Ellie did then. Yeah. But uh, I think the result was the right result, and we we'll see. Uh, we'll pro well. I'll leave it with you, Liam. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Fight number three is a, a fellow there I've seen quite a few times. Paul McHale uh, up against uh, Adrian Marks, and wasn't he part of the White Collar Boxing League, which you also do? Yeah, White Collar Boxing League. The chap, nice fella, signed up, fifty-two years old. Right. And again. He said to me, I'm a bit worried. He said, I, I got matched on blah, blah, blah. He said, and it was a mismatch. So I said, look, if I can't match her, mm -hmm. I said, I won't make a fight. I said, because I'm not going to stick you in for 28, 30-year-old guy. It's yeah. going to knock you all around the ring. That ain't my cup of tea. I said, but what I will do is leave it with me. And I found him, another chap, Adrian. I think Adrian was about 48. Yes. <laughs> so the pair of them come together. And now I think joint years in the ring was probably nearly 100 years in the ring, something like that. Yeah, and uh, they had their first fight at the York called Bethnal Green, Paul mm -hmm. one, and um, they wanted the rematch, and uh, we put a master's belt on it because their men ain't going to fight cricket, and yes. you know what? It was nice to be able to do that for them, and and you know, so good good men, you know. Yeah, fantastic. So fight four, uh, Billy Ottaway up against uh, Marcos Santos. Anything yeah. we need to know about that one? White collar boxing league fight again. Ed Garza and the big sixteen ounce gloves. Billy Ottaway's debut. Uh, Marcus Santos had only had the one fight, lost it. So another fair match that we had there. Yes. And uh, Billy was coming down to my gym in in Essex, and he was with his trainer, a good friend of mine, Lee Spencer, getting plenty of rounds of sparring out. And I think again the viewers will see a bit of a nice uh, novice banger, really. And it's nice to see uh, Lee Spencer in the corner, uh, who's Absolutely. been fighting on the, the IBA for years. Um, is he likely to come back in the ring, Lee Spencer? Lee left the um, the glove boxing to go into the MMA, and right. he had three or four or five MMA fights. Wanted to get that out of his system, and now he wants to go into the young glove boxing. Oh, really? All oh, right. And uh, so I, I, you know, I wish him all the best and what have you. But uh, that's where Lee's moving to, I believe, uh, next year. Fantastic. So last fight of the five, uh, a ladies' fight. I love some of these ladies' fights. I think they're, they're really entertaining. Got Kayla Allen, who's a big, big hitter, up against Michaela. Is it Eiley? Is that her name? Yeah, Eiley. Kayla. Um, yeah. That's, yeah, Michaela um, Eiley, yes. And and uh, what a fighter that Kayla Allen is. I know, I know. She trains with the RJ's gym down in Chickwell in Essex, and yeah. uh, she always comes. To, to really give a, a performance. But I'd noticed Michaela in her first debut fight for me mm -hmm. that she does exactly the same. She comes and gives everything. And I thought, what a lovely match that would make yeah. for, at LBA, Ladies Boxing Association side of things. And again, uh, I think we saw a, a very, very good fight there. Fantastic. And what was nice at the end, there was a, a fellow came in the ring. Is it Pat O'Keefe? Was that his name? Pat O'Keefe. Well, Pat O'Keefe, funny yeah. enough, fought on my first ever kickboxing show and he boxed or he kickboxed Nigel Ben. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. So it all brought it around. So, folks, what we're going to do now is we're going to see the five fights. At the end of the five fights, Alan's going to give his verdict of the fight that he liked the most. Uh, so let's see the fights. Please welcome once again, boxing out of the blue corner. Representing the box up gym, make some noise for Rishi Keys. And his opponent across the ring, boxing out of the red corner. Representing the fellas, 
Boxing Club, raise the roof for Lewis Driver. Round one.
of Skills Boxing. There is no decision, so please raise the room for Rishi and Lewis. We normally do give away medals and trophies, but Alan's got something new tonight. Well, they always say that you remember your first pay packet. Now, I was going to get the boys a trophy, but to be honest with you, they box so professional tonight, I want to give them a little bit of wages. Alright? So give them a nice uh, round of applause. So again, the president of the IBA is going to pay both these young boxers for their performance tonight. So one more time, raise room for Richie Keach and Lewis Driver. Boxing out of the blue corner, from Wakefield, Luke Granger. And his opponent across the ring of boxing out of the red corner, representing the champions, Jim Sam Campbell. Three, two minute rounds. Round one.
Let's give it up for a great contender, Adrian Martin, once again, your winner. So fantastic. In one minute and 18 seconds of the opening round, Mr. Paul Macau. Boxing out of the blue corner, representing the Lineal Gym, Marco DZ the Wall. Representing the Rebels, Fight Club, Billy Shot, shot, shot! 
After three rounds for the Ladies Boxing Association, we go to our official judges scorecards. And a judges score in the contest by way of unanimous decision. In favour of and your winner in the red corner. Yeah. So Pat O'Keefe fought Nigel Ben. It was the first wage Nigel received for, for fighting and he got 50 quid from the president of the IBA. Also Pat was a dedicated final, one of the top of the tree. And just for tonight Pat, Adam Warlock would like to present you with something for being one of the first ever fighters on the IBA. So, so Mr. Adam Warlock's going to come into the ring. But ladies and gentlemen, what an absolute legend he fought. When Nigel Ben left the army, he fought Pat O'Keefe, who's right here right now before he went pro. And also, guys, uh, and Alan's John, John Joyce, John, John Joyce, John Joyce, official shorts, 
It's been signed by it's Joe. It's been signed by the juggernaut, Joe Joyce. And we want you to have these. And we wanted, uh, right. we wanted Pat to have these tonight. So Pat, that's for you. Legend, can you give Pat a big round of applause for an absolute gentleman? Great martial arts team, right? It's also been a great inspiration to many people and also a bit of boxing history while we're talking about Nigel Ben. Our cuts man, our official cut, cuts man for the IBA, Mr. Peter the Fraser, who's on the top table, who actually managed Nigel Ben when he went through to the WBC World Champion at Middleweight. So he's on the top table, he works for Continuously the RBA. Please raise your hand really for Peter De Freitas. And then come one more time for Mr. Pat O'Keefe. Some really entertaining fights there. I, I really enjoyed them. Um, what would you say was your favourite fight out of them five? I've got to say the ladies, Liam. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I thought it was an absolute blinder. Yeah, that, that was the top fight, wasn't it? I mean, they yeah. really really had a go and Kayla and Alan uh, won that one and uh, a fantastic fight wasn't it oh no non-stop action and that's non-stop action that is the IBA non-stop action so I hope you enjoyed this uh, IBA fight night we're going to be coming back with the next five fights uh, from that uh, September 24th IBA fight night uh, and that'll be in a couple of days time so we'll see you soon thank you very much Alan thank you Liam <laughs>